Hey guys, my name is Vishwas and in this video, I'm going to go over my React stack for 2021. I felt that a few of you might be interested in what I'm focusing on in the React ecosystem, which will also give you an idea of the different courses you can expect on the channel this year. We're going to begin with React. This is a no-brainer since we are discussing about the React stack after all. But with React, I'm focusing on TypeScript. TypeScript is a typed superset of JavaScript that compiles to plain JavaScript. By using React and TypeScript together, you get the benefit of a statically typed language for your user interface. This means more safety and fewer bugs shipping to the front end. Moving forward, companies will surely expect a candidate to know TypeScript so I recommend you get started on the same. React with TypeScript is definitely a tutorial series I'm going to create in the coming months, so keep an eye out for that. The next part of my React stack is React Router. When building medium to large scale single page applications, routing is essential and my go-to library is React Router. The current version is five, but version 6 is expected to be released this year with some great improvements. I know a lot of you have requested for a tutorial series on React Router and I promise that I will create one when version 6 is released. Next up we have state management. State management libraries help you manage the data in your application. When dealing with client state, I'm still sticking to Redux. In fact, I believe Redux Toolkit is the recommended approach to using Redux in 2021. I do have an entire playlist on Redux, but Redux Toolkit is something I hope to add in the near future. If you're starting with Redux now, I would suggest you read docs on Redux and Redux Toolkit and then get started with the latter. Now it's important to understand that when it comes to state management, there are two types, client state and server state. For client state, I'm using Redux, but for server state, I'm going to be using React Query. React Query is a library responsible for managing asynchronous operations between your server and client. If you're dealing with a lot of async data fetching, trust me, this is a library that you have to read about. It does replace some parts of Redux, but Redux and React Query can coexist in a project without any problem. Both the libraries also have great DevTool support and are amazing to work with. I'm very keen on adding a React Query tutorial playlist to the channel. All right, next we have a component library. There are great libraries out there like Material UI or Ant Design, but my React stack comprises of Chakra UI. It just has an abundance of components and works with the styled system approach, which I personally prefer. Since it is a component library, I'm not sure if it makes sense to create a tutorial series, but I highly recommend you give Chakra UI a try. The next package in my React stack is Formic. Over the years, I've worked on a couple of projects where form building was a major chunk of the work. Managing form state, validations, and dealing with form submissions. Formic is something that has come to my rescue and is what I'm going to stick with for 2021 as well. I know React hook form has gained a lot of traction but Formic version 3 should be released in the near future, which I'm sure will have great improvements over the current version. Formic with the Yup validation library is definitely a Swiss knife for all things related to forms in React. If you're interested, I do have an entire React Formic series that you can take a look at. Okay, next we have testing. When it comes to testing, I have Jest with React testing library. They are recommended by the official React documentation and are sort of the go-to packages for testing React applications. 
What is great about React Testing Library is that it encourages you to write tests that resemble the way users would interact with your software. This helps you avoid implementation details. So rather than dealing with instances of rendered React components, your tests will work with actual DOM nodes. This is another topic that a lot of you have requested tutorials on, but at the moment, I'm not at the stage where I'm comfortable enough to teach what I know. Hopefully, I'll understand more about its usage and can deliver a series that you guys will benefit from. All right, next we have Storybook. Storybook is basically a development environment and playground for UI components. It enables you to create components independently and showcase those components interactively in an isolated development environment. What that means is you can develop UI components in isolation without having to worry about the business logic. When working on projects, Storybook allows the front-end team to work on all the presentation components and show them to the stakeholders while the back-end team is working on the APIs. I do have an entire series on Storybook with React, so do make sure to check that out. The last part of my React stack that I want to talk about is Next.js. Next.js is a React framework which gives you an excellent developer experience with all the features that you would need for a fantastic application. There is hybrid static and server-side rendering, TypeScript support, built-in routing and API conventions, and a lot more. It might probably be how most, if not every React project might be built in the coming years. Hopefully, you get to learn about Next.js right here on this very channel in just a few months. With that, I've pretty much covered what I wanted to discuss in this video. Do let me know in the comment section what does your React stack look like in 2021 and also which of these packages are you most eagerly waiting to learn from Code Evolution? Do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next series.